So I'm John Costa from the Documentary Media Centre. We're in the basement gallery of uh, Leicester Adult Education Centre and I'm here with my new friend, Nick, Nick Stanley. How are you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you, John. And you? I'm very well. And so, listen, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. In week two of your two-week retrospective for 42 years of being a photographer, does it feel like 42 years? It doesn't when I look at the photographs. It, most of them seem as if I've taken them yesterday. Yeah. I must admit, as, as someone who's 58, uh, we're not going to ask you your age because that's not polite, but as someone who's 58, I kind of recognise some of these images. They feel familiar, yes. particularly some of your more sort of commercial marketing images. It's, it's fascinating. So obviously there will be lots of people that will recognise some of these, these images as well. I mean, yeah. does it make you feel good being able to have your first solo exhibition? It does. Um, it, it looks far better than I thought it would look, to be quite frank. But uh, yes... So, do you remember um, when you first wanted to be a photographer? Yes, I was, I was a kid then. Uh, my mother was a photojournalist, which was quite unusual in the 1950s. Um, she covered um, camp, camping sites, caravan sites, and that things for American trailer magazines, as they call called. Uh, no, but getting back to today, um, I couldn't have done this without, without you, so I'm very grateful to you. Uh, and the photographs, I, I can tell you how each one was taken, I can remember every single one. And there's over 200, so it was more than I intended. But as they've been mounted so well, it, it, that was done by um, uh, Paul Perry and, and uh, Tim Dawson and Joe Dawson. So many thanks to them. Um, yeah, it just looks good and I'm very, very pleased with it. Mm. Now, I remember talking to another photographer about doing a, an exhibition at my documentary media centre, and uh, I think he said he had a million images in his, in his kind of, uh, portfolio to go through, and he actually found the whole process quite difficult. It so is. it was cathartic and difficult. I mean, was it a challenge for you to pick these images, or were they kind of, did yeah, they no, rise no, to the top for it you? It was a challenge. You had to leave some quite good ones out. What I wanted to do was a deliberately uh, eclectic selection of uh, images. Uh, so I had to choose so many from, from portraiture, so many from industrial, commercial, and so on. Um, my reason for that was I wanted uh, as many people as possible to be interested in something that's here. Uh, and I think, I hope, that I've achieved that. Now, as a professional photographer during that whole period of time, do you take photographs for yourself, just personal projects, or have you always found it's always been a profession? No, it's like, uh, I suppose you'd, you'd think it was like taking goals to Newcastle, but uh, no, I, I, I actually enjoy taking pictures wherever and whenever, so I've always taken them when I've been on holidays and, uh, and outings with my family. Now you've also used it as a fundraising opportunity um, for your, your late wife who passed yes. away and um, tell us a little bit about her and do you think she would have been proud of you today? I think she definitely would, yeah. She was very, very proud when I came to my MBE at uh, Buckingham Palace uh, that she would have loved this. Um, it came totally out of the blue, her diagnosis with motor neurone disease and she lasted only 11 months from diagnosis to the passing away. So, yeah, um, I'd, I'd like to get as much money as possible from the Virgin Your Own Disease Association. They have always been very helpful and supportive. And likewise, with my own strokes that I had as a result of pneumonia in, 19, uh, sorry, in 2040, um, yes, uh, I would, we would also want to support the Stroke Association. Now you were saying this is your first solo exhibition, so other events that you've been involved in, has it always been sort of a commercial type photographer's exhibits about some of the stuff that you've done maybe around cruise ships or you know, yeah. events? Well my, my cruise ships um, are from my own picture library and people can buy from that picture library if they want to. There's quite a lot of people that are very interested in maritime matters so that, that's quite buoyant. Oh. Good pun, Buoyant, it? very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and what, what was the question you asked before that? Just, just about you know your, the previous exhibitions that you've been involved oh, yes. with, with other other photographers. Have they been very kind of commercially focused, industry focused? Uh, yes. Um, 
they, they've uh, come, the commissions that I've done have, have always come through um, from uh, commercial companies, uh, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Londis, Saatchi and Saatchi, um, to name but a few. Mm. Uh, Texaco again. Um, but there's different types of photography. I was doing, for, for Texaco for example, I was doing architectural work. And that was just photographing all the new Texaco garages as they opened up or were refitted. Mm. They always wanted somebody on hand to, to uh, record. So that's quite uh, undemanding, uh, straightforward bread and butter work. Mm. Mm. So you've seen photography since you were a, a, a small boy through yeah. your mum being a photojournalist. I mean, was it something that you then did at college? Did you go off to uni to do it? And how did? Where, what was your first commercial job? Can you remember what the first thing was that you got paid to do? Yes, it's here actually. It was a, it was a, a commercial job for Mills Brothers Rock Forgings of, of, of Coventry. What they do is they they turn out crude uh, metal pa parts. And which is sent to uh, a, a, a factory where the, those metal parts are turned down into high precision parts. So yeah, that was that was bread and butter work. But um, I can remember every single photograph that we've taken here out of the two hundred. Mm -hmm. So um, is there a particular photo here that you're very proud of, or one that has won the most awards, or something that you've had the nicest comment about? Um, well, yes, there's, there's a number for different reasons. The, uh, the new Alain Velasquez over there, um, I was particularly uh, pleased with the way that I've built that up. Uh, you'll notice that the, the waves coming around it... Ah, I'm going to scan, yes. scan around my... Mm. The waves coming around yep. the body there... Yeah, um, in the bottom left there, yeah. 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 They always broke like that. So there's that natural shape to echo in the in the body of the mm. the uh, model there, and you've got these striations coming downwards in a, a diagonal. So I'll, I'll try to blend her in with rocks. That has won an award in America. Okay. Uh, with the World Council of Professional Photography, and it won about three or four awards here. Okay. So that's probably one of the most successful photographs I've taken from the perspective of. Um, award-winning, but it's not the most uh, money-earning shot that I've, I've, I've uh, uh, executed. Can uh, you tell us what that is? Uh, I don't think it's here. Um, You've got it in a vault buried deep underground. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, when we, were, when we were choosing the photographs, as you say, you, you knew a photographer that found it almost overwhelming. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's tedious, for sure. Yeah. You're going through piles and piles of, of photographs. Um, not the physical photographs themselves, but negatives and transparencies. Mm -hmm. Because my, my uh, professional career spanned for fairly equally 20 years, 20 odd years, before uh, chemical uh, photography uh, was rather finished. And then, since the year 2000, when I was happy that um, a digital photograph could render uh, good skin tones, uh, that, that's in the year 2000 that that, that became possible. The al algorithms had evolved to, to that extent that you couldn't tell a digital photograph from a conventional, conventional chemical photograph. Uh, so, uh, yeah. How did, how, and how did your career as a professional photographer come to an end? Or is it still ongoing now? Is it, uh, well, it, it yeah. came to an end with medical retirement, I'm afraid, because of my, uh, the strokes that I had as a result of pneumonia. I say as a result of pneumonia to make it clear that I don't suffer from arter any arterial disease at all. And that's probably what got me through. Uh, but I, I know that I was... I was very close to, to, to death on that occasion. It's made me want to do things. Unfortunately, I wanted to do, do a lot of them with my wife, but she's no longer here. Mm. Um, so it's nice to have this event as a, as a bit of a memorial as well. You, yes, you asked previously about uh, my, my path towards photography. Yes, uh, I, I started on a sort of part-time basis 
and then I went to um, uh, the University of Westminster uh, where they were offering a degree course in, in, in photography. So I did that and when it came out I got some nice photographs. I took them to, uh, or I was going to take them, all around to, to all of the picture agencies in London. But the first one I went to, Rex Features, they said we want those photographs and they, uh, they sold them worldwide. It was quite nice having little checks drop through the door every now and again, <laughs> unexpectedly. Brilliant, yeah. Now when, you, now when you get to our age, it's very difficult to talk to young people because they see their careers as very kind of linear and they need to do this to get here and gain this qualification or something. But when you get old and wrinkled like ourselves, you realise it's more about being in the right place at the right time or walking into the Rex agency and them liking your photographs. Yeah. Has there been uh, one group of people or an individual in particular that during your 42-year career you think actually that was a real kind of game-changer meeting that person because they opened up that opportunity to do that? Um, yes, uh, I suppose there must have been some such people, but I can't bring any. No one stands person. out. No. Uh, you, of course, have enabled me to have this exhibition here, so that's really nice of you. You've been very kind. Listen, Nick, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us. Congratulations and enjoy the final couple of days of your exhibition. Thank you very much, John.